Hey, what's up, guys? Joseph here. Uh, I'm gonna do a uh, rundown on paints. Um, got a selection here going on, and uh, kind of give a uh, for beginners, um, even somebody that maybe has not used any of these paints, uh, an idea of what they're getting into. Um, uh, yeah, just what they're getting into, what, what they're for, uh, purpose, types, um, applications, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to try to keep the video down to not long. Uh, it, it be really short. It could be really long. It depends. Um, I kind of, my computer sucks for editing and, um, it's really slow, so I pretty much do one shots where these are just one shot setups and it's thrown up here. Um, so, the first thing I have to tell you is uh, anytime you do anything with paint, a new paint, whatever, this will be your best friend. Now, you're probably wondering why I am holding a spoon. For those of you that have been in the uh, hobby business of, you know, models for a while, whether it be car, um, gumpla, resin kits, garage kit, um, sculptures, whatever, uh, usually we'll do a test. From a spoon you primer it you do your paint you do your top coat you see what it does so you get a good idea of how your paint's going to turn out it takes all the guessing out if you're going to try new effects do it on a spoon everything do it on this guy right on the back of it right there that's your best friend next thing i'm going to go to is primer we got three different kinds here. This one, well, first of all, these are all a lacquer based primer. I personally don't use any others. Um, the reason why I don't is if you're using plastic and such. The lacquer base will kind of eat into a plastic, giving it a great bond. Uh, some people are worried about using lacquers with plastic. Um, it can make your plastic brittle. I really don't worry about it. Uh, I like that bond. I like how they work. I like how they go on. Um, there's other primers as well. There's acrylic primers, there's um, urethane primers. I, I highly doubt you're going to be using a urethane primer. Those are usually used for uh, car paints, um, metal work, stuff like that. Um, this one right here is a uh, Tamaya. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. It's $5.49. It's a fairly good primer. Um, I haven't had any bad stuff happen with it. I would say, uh, particle-wise, it's between the 12 and the 5, and I'll explain that in a minute. These two are from Mr. Hobby. Uh, you have Mr. Surfacer 500 and Mr. Surfacer 1200. The 500, I don't really use that much. 500 is really thick. The reason why is all because of that 500. It's a bigger particle of uh, paint binder that they use in it. Um, the reason why I got this is for when I start doing resin kits and uh, stuff like that. It can be great to use in pinholes and stuff. You know, you don't have to waste your putty. Just dab this in there, let it dry, sand it out. 
Now, the Mr. Surfer 1200, this was a great primer. Now, I had to kind of get used to it just for the fact that I was using this and then went to this. Um, I use this either when I don't have this or I run out. I just recently ran out of this. Well, I have a little bit left, but use it for small stuff like heads, stuff like that. But this is very fine. Um, when I first shot it, it came out. It remind me of like water. I was like, oh, water. Uh, so I had to thicken it up just a little bit. But the consistency is, uh, it, it's great. I mean, it shows every detail you you put on it, and it's a, it's a good primer. Um, like everything, dilute these with a lacquer thinner. Um, This is your kind of standard lacquer thinner by Mr. Hobby. So color thinner, you'll see these being sold around. Uh, price is okay, um, but you know it works good. Um, I don't use that one as much. I use it more for the paints, not really with that. Um, I go a little bit more bold. Uh, be careful with using this one because if you use too much of it, it can kill the model. Um, it's stronger. Um, regular lacquer thinner from Walmart, uh, Home Depot. Uh, most hardware stores will have this brand right here. Uh, it's stronger in base, so just watch it. Um, no practice with it. Like I said, I've done a lot of painting in my life and uh, I'm confident with it. Um, I use that majority of the time. I use it for cleanup and my you know primers, all that. Okay. So next, we'll set these aside. We're going to go to acrylics. Now, these ones I just brought up here. This is a Vallejo model color. Uh, you can get a Hobby Lobby. Um, there's other ones, I believe Citadel uh, as an acrylic brand. There's, I mean, there's a ton of acrylic paints out there. Uh, your Hobby ones, though, are like this. These are typically more for hand painting. Uh, you can use them in airbrush. Um, if you do that, uh, make sure you get the proper uh, airbrush thinner for it. I believe uh, Vallejo has their own brand. Um, if when in doubt, uh, you can buy... Um, airbrush medium thinner that will turn just about any paint into airbrush paint. Uh, watercolor acrylics. I'll show you another acrylic here in a minute now what I'm talking about. So these are mostly hand paints. Um, not a bad paint, just hand paint. Now if you get these though, I highly recommend you getting the clears for it. Now, which they're a varnish uh, basically, they're acrylic resin, and um, it's like acrylic binder with the uh, the clear resin. So here's a gloss, satin, and matte. Uh, those three, you can pretty much do every effect you need to. Um, But like I said, more for hand painting. Uh, yeah, for like, well, what are you talking about hand painting? Well, that's, you know, small detail work on uh, Gundams, models. Um, if you're doing any figures, let me pop this open real quick.
they're doing like miniatures. Um, I think this is from the Kingdom Death series. You know, um, I might airbrush the skin on it, but the rest is all going to be hand painting. That's really what that's good for. Again, you know, uh, do color samples, tests, spray on your primer and paint it on, you know, get the feel for the paint. Now, if you go to Walmart anywhere and you buy a cheap acrylic paint for maybe a dollar, you're almost wasting your money and time. If you bought the proper airbrush medium thinner you could probably get away with using this the thing with using one of these is it's not high pigmented um, it says permanent acrylic paint but it's not super high pigmented um, it's not made for anything but crafts and most crafts really are the mindset hey we made it and they'll be thrown away later um i have used this in artwork and stuff um with proper thinner uh now there is one other thing with this i believe it was with this leg this sengaku if you look, the panel lighting on that right there, um, right here, um, I think right here, that's why it looks so shoddy, uh, but right here turned out good, um, right down here, that was actually done with the black cheap acrylic, you gotta do it with the cheap acrylic and not good artist acrylic, and basically, you thin it down uh, with water and you can put it in and then when you get done you take a toothpick and it can chip off uh, now you want to make sure you have a good uh, top coat on that first before you do that but it works with the cheap acrylics like that that's the only downside, not downside, but um, alternative, I would say, on using that. Um, other than that, just stay away from it. Um, if you pick, pick up temper paints, you've just wasted your money. Do not buy temper paints for hobby use. That's for, like, kids in school. Just leave it alone. Or if you have a special project, you want to use it. The next acrylics are a little bit high up. Um, I use Wicked Colors, uh, Createx Airbrush. Wicked Colors are by Createx, it says right there. Now, also, I love them is Auto Airs. Auto Airs are almost kind of the same as Wicked Colors. These are like Auto Airs made for uh, artists to use. Um, now, what's cool about those three lines, and even like this one can be used with these and the Auto Airs. Uh, I'll start with this. This is your basic Kratex airbrush colors. Now this one is pretty much thin perfectly to just shoot straight through. You may want to thin it a little bit more depending on what you're doing. This will be $4.50 uh, at Hobby Lobby. You can probably do a full build on whatever you're doing with just this and be perfectly fine depending on you know what you're trying to do wicked colors i just used them i do like them uh they work the same as the auto airs uh if you're going to acrylic painting um great products uh but if you get these you want to make even with auto airs you want to make sure you get the wicked colors or w500 or auto air 4012. It's the same product. I'll say it both on the bottle. And it's a reducer. It's a thinner. Made just for these. Um, 
pros and cons with the acrylics with these. Um, they're not as durable as the lacquers and enamels. I'm not saying they're bad. Um, you just got to watch what you're doing to make sure uh, you're not scratching them. Uh, if you're going to move your model a lot, those areas are probably going to get scratched up. Just know that now. Um, clean up with them is really easy. Great. In fact, usually I'll spray. Instead of using the cleaner, I'll just take it in my sink, wash it out. Very easy, very uh, eco-friendly. That's why they were made, was um, to be eco-friendly, easy cleanup. Um, Lex, toxic and hazard to you. Um, I can get by with spraying this and not really needing a mask when I got my air, air boost going. Um, with lacquers, you need that. With enamels, you need that. Uh, also, cost, this was six bucks. Um, this is two fluid ounces. That's quite a bit compared to lacquers. Considering that I'm thinning it down, really, I'm getting four ounces of paint all together, once you thin all down, roughly. Um, for six bucks, that's great. So that's another good thing. Um, also, if you combine the Wicked Colors and the Auto Airs, you can do so much with effects and just paint types, so much. Uh, it's an amazing lineup because uh, with the Auto Airs, it was made for automotive work and they have such a cool lineup of colors and effect paints and everything. Love it. Next, I'm going to go to enamels. Uh, first off, this little guy was 179 Hobby Lobby. Uh, enamels are nice and strong. Um, they have great shininess. So if you're doing detail work and you want a good, just nice shine, enamels are good. I usually use enamels for hand brushing. Uh, details on my dumplism models. I don't usually use it for uh, all around whole straight build. Um, things with enamels. <clears throat> uh, enamels, sorry about that. They are the longest of the paints to dry. So you got to give it good cure time. Um, You'll want a cleaner, uh, enamel cleaner, uh, thinner, or um, to clean it, uh, you can use lighter fluid, uh, even lacquer uh, thinner to clean it. Um, I also use uh, the flat enamels, and the reason why I say flat is I didn't really know you had to use the flat, uh, to do panel washes. And basically all you do is you take lighter fluid in your flat enamel and put in some of your enamel and uh, the ratio is probably 80% lighter fluid to 20% uh, paint and uh, you have your panel wash. Um, it's pretty much on enamel so just let it dry. Next we have is our lacquers. Now I have some different la different lacquers here. Uh, first, you're wondering why I have nail polish. Nail polish is a lacquer. Um, and it's actually a very durable lacquer. Um, you can put this on on a model and take your fingernail right at without even top coat and scratch it, and it's not going to do nothing. Uh, if you do it right, this is 
a real cheap, great way to paint. Um, you just got to make sure you get the right colors and you thin it down right. Uh, the rule of thumb is 50-50. 50% thinner, 50% paint, and work from there. Um, like I said, cost efficient. Um, you might get some weird looks, though, if you're a dude. <laughs> you're buying all these nail polishes. Uh, yeah. Uh, next one, uh, Gaia Color. Uh, this is a lacquer. Um, also, there's Tamaya. Now, Tamaya has both uh, lacquers and acrylics. Now, the acrylics <laughs> are almost, almost like a lacquer, though. Um, they have the same properties as a lacquer. They're not an acrylic like this, so I'm going to throw them in this category. Because uh, you uh, thin it down with uh, the lacquer thinner. Um, these can be a little bit costly, I think anywhere from four to six bucks. I have a site that I found where I can get them for like two dollars to three bucks, depending on size and which one. Which is really good. It just takes forever to get here because they come overseas. Uh, Gaia Color, um, absolutely lovely, this brand of paint, uh, goes on great, um, they have lots of great colors, and, uh, easily numbered, so that you can easily just order, I mean, it's great, I'll tell you, you know, bright red, gloss, you know, very cool paint brand, um, also Mr. Crystal Color, uh, these are... An effect paint. I don't know. You can kind of see like the red when I when the light hits it. Yeah. Effect paints. And also you have um, all clads which can be tricky to use but very great effects. Uh, this is gold. Let me shake it up and you'll see you know, gold in it. Um, with the lacquers, this is a must. Use a respirator. And also, make sure you have great ventilation. Um, if you have to paint it outside or in a garage, do that. I have a air booth that I made, and so it sucks up the fumes. That is a must. These things are not good for you um, to inhale. Uh, they will mess you up. And I've done my share of probably inhaling a lot of it, and which I it's probably haunt me down in the future. I hope not, but hey. Um, great, great, great paints. They're durable. Uh, tons of different colors. Um, the only thing with it is, um, you know, they, they are hard on plastics, so you got to get the feel of it, so you're not just overly doing your, uh, thinner and just destroying your model. Uh, I've never really had two bad of instances. The only thing on, uh, this guy was, I don't know, it could have been a, uh, uh, defect of the cast or it could have been paint but right in there it's hard to see on that um kept shattering on me I eventually had to peg it and fix it uh from there we'll move on go to some clears here now when you go to clears um there's a bunch of different stuff you can use. Um, I have all clads here. I, I like using the all clads. The only downside with the all clads I don't like is uh, they feel kind of tacky afterwards. Um, I let them sit for maybe a day or two and that tackiness goes away. Uh, with these being lacquers though, and you can spray them right out of the bottle. They're they're good to go. You just pour it in and spray. Uh, some people might dilute it. I don't know. I just spray straight. Um, 
they're a real good brand. Uh, like I said, they they kind of feel tackiness, so though. Even even to this day, sometimes I can kind of feel a, a tackiness. It kind of goes away over time, but um, you can you can handle it after an hour. Uh, I would suggest giving it a good day or two, letting it just really cure. Also, you'll have canned uh, glosses. These are uh, this is a Mr. Hobby one. I thought I was buying a liquid like this, but it was a can. Um, you can buy uh, Krylon spray paint, uh, clear coats, matte, um, clear stuff like that. You can also go, uh, since if you use lacquers and stuff, you can go to um, Auto Pop Store and uh, buy uh, a can clear from there. Um, it'll probably cost you a little bit more, but it's no big problem. Um, you can also get varnishes and all types of stuff in clear. Um, if you don't want to use this out of the can, uh, if you have an empty bottle, it's called decanting. That's where you take it, you'll spray it in, and do it outside, don't do it inside. Uh, you'll spray it in because fumes will come flying and fill it up and then thin it down and you can shoot it through an airbrush. And that's decanning. Um, uh, let's see, there's you can get acrylic clears in can and also in um, mixable form for you to do uh, through the airbrush. I like using the lacquer clears. They're more durable, uh, hold up better to scratches, stuff like that. If you're using a lacquer clear, you have to really test it out on your spoon. If you use it with this, destroyed. You use it with this, destroyed. Now, if you use it with this, it's probably not going to be destroyed. In fact, I've done it. Uh, my group build, which is on my last video, uh, it was cleared um, with this, the gloss. Now, I'll let you in on something before I did that. Since I was talking about an ac acrylic clear, this guy right here, Pledge Florica. <laughs> now, I'm wondering what well, that's Florica. What am I doing? Um, it used to be called Future. Uh, some say Pledge Floor and Go or whatever, blah blah blah, but. The multi-surface finish, um, two times more shine versus water. This right here is actually an acrylic clear coat. Um, that's why it gives it the shine. That's why it seals stuff in. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what it does. Uh, this right here is your most effective clear. What I use this for is in-between coats, uh, decaling. Um, and I'll clear one good clear before I do my lacquer clears before I do these just as an extra protection because if it's going to eat through it's going to eat through this guy instead of those guys and still do its job so I always clear with that beforehand um, so if you're worried about lacquers boom and you want a gloss you can use this guy. If not, get like a Krylon mat. Um, that's pretty much a rundown of the hobby based uh, paints. Um, there's a lot of other paints out there in the world. Um, if you look up uh, in art stores and hobby stores and stuff um, you'll see 
a bunch of different paints. I know some artists that use, uh, for like washes and effects, they'll use uh, watercolor paints, um, stuff like that. The main thing if you do that is uh, do your tests on it and see what happens. Um, there's also powder compounds that you can use for um, weathering and detailing effects. Uh, there's a lot. The main thing I have to tell you is don't be afraid to try something. That's how you learn. That's how you improve. Um, check out YouTube videos also. Um, a lot of people post on there. Um, use different stuff. Um, give reviews on paints. Check that out. Research. 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 Also, don't forget about Mr. Spoon. This guy right here. He will save you a lot of heartache. A lot of time. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, just hit me up and uh, I'll try to answer them. Uh, just build, have fun, paint. You know, don't be afraid to mess up. Um, if you're if you're doing a resin kit, even Gundam kits, you know, you can strip the paint and redo it. Um, the only downside I would say with hackers and, and a plastic kit, if you strip it too much, you're eventually going to just brittle your, brittle your plastic away to nothingness. But don't be afraid to try something, especially if you test that out on a spoon. Um, also, I, I guess with your clear coats, you've got three different types. I don't have the the middle one but you'll have flat you'll have gloss and you'll have a semi gloss and exactly what it sounds when you flat it out it's not going to have the shininess as you would a gloss and a semi gloss is like a mid between um, I want to do one build that actually has both flat and gloss I think it'd be cool um, like a two-tone gloss but um, yeah, that's something else. Um, like I said, if you're a beginner, I hope this helps and explain some of the paints, uh, kind of how to use them, what they're for, and everything like that. Have fun, build, have a good day.